All right, internet. We're gonna get right into this because it's gonna be a long video. We gotta start with this and then we're gonna chat. So I'm just gonna wind this up and then I'll explain what I'm doing because this could take a while. Wind it up, wind it up, wind it up. All right. So if you notice the timer had like about a second on it, that wasn't necessarily intentional the way this timer app works. I kind of have to have a timer going. Like it starts the timer automatically when you pull it up. So I have to kind of like get it paused to get the timers to fit on the screen in such a way that you get the timer on top. Whoops. But it takes about a second probably to get it started. So that makes a little bit of noise. But in my editing, I find that most of the time the noise of the spinner doesn't pick up on the camera that well. But anyway, let's talk about what I just did there. So this is an OG original Ohana. And it's got the new bearing that we're going to be talking about in here today, the HC4 from Heck Ferula. But let's just talk about the, um, the spinning, and then we'll get this out of the way. So I've got a ribbon here. Um, now, before I had had a pole string that was um, like, I don't know what kind of string it was from, maybe a, like a hoodie string or something. It was kind of a flat string, but it was hollow. Um, so it kind of like, you know, would squish a little bit and had a little bit of stretch to it. This is just a ribbon from Bennington Potters. Um, and it's about an arm's length from the middle of my chest to the end of my arm. You don't want it too long because you want to be able to pull it cleanly off the spinner. So just in terms of the length, you know, somewhere around three feet is probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of, of good. Um, now what I wasn't doing initially either was I've got a little bit of sticky tack on the end. This does two things. One, it makes sure that the, it kind of stays in place while you're getting it twisted and started up, but also kind of make sure it gets a good pull. And this isn't super sticky. Um, in fact, it wants to come off this ribbon quite a bit. So what I did was I actually poked a hole with a pencil and then I put another piece of sticky tack on the other side. So it's almost like a rivet and it just helps it. Um, I found that this was like the sticky tack stuff was going flying across the room or sticking to the spinner. So, um, so anyway, yeah, and you just wrap it up and then you, when you pull, you try to pull it even on the same plane as the spinner. You don't want to like pull it up because then the ribbon kind of untwirls. So when you pull it, you really want to make sure you're pulling it straight away. Um, and that's really about all there is to it. Um, it gives you a nice, good, consistent pull. I'm getting pretty consistent times, so um, that's kind of what's important I've found um, with this pull string method recently, and I've really just fine-tuned this. So, uh, But let's talk about the bearing that's in here. So the bearing that's in there is an HC4. It's a new one. Heck, Ferula sent me a bunch of bearings to test out, um, and um, you know I was excited to test them out. I didn't realize it was something that I don't know if he just got to try to replace the HC2 um, and was really looking for spin time in, in it in particular, uh, but it turned out to be pretty fantastic. So I kind of really rediscovered, I, I lost my old string, so I kind of fine-tuned the string method with this new bearing. And if you saw any of my posts online, you would have seen that I got 20, guess, 7, 13, or 18, I think was the peak that I got. Um, pretty friggin' ridiculous spin times. Now, to be fair, that was a good one. The spin before that was 26 and a half, and then since then I've consistently been getting in the 23, 24 minute range, um, which is still pretty good. But then I was like, hmm, I did fine tune my pull string method. So I wanted to kind of look back. Now my previous pull string record um, with the Ohana was a 20 minute and 49 second with a fidget HQ high velocity bearing. So, I wanted to kind of revisit that and see, like, with this new pull string method, what sort of times was I getting? My previous record with an HC2 um, was actually only around 1840, 1850. Um, so, pretty significant difference in times there um, from the 27 that I'm getting now. So, I took one of my old HC2s, took a couple of them, cleaned them out, and then the best I was able to get with the new pull string method was 20 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, 2031. So I can pretty consistent, pretty fairly say like my new pull string method does get me a little bit better consistent times, but not enough to really think that this bearing isn't really the balls. <laughs> get at the balls. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's do a little beer review. This is from Stone Corral. Um, they're over in uh, Richmond, I think. Yeah, Richmond. Um, so brimming with fruity aromas and attitude, this brew is balanced with a complex malt flavor, uh, malt profile that demands attention 
Flavors of citrus, resin, stone fruit, and sweet malt round this bird out for a bright and refreshing quaff. What's the percentage we're looking at? Six and a half per six point seven percent. So Brut in Vermont, y'all. So let's pop the top. It's a little foamy right off the top. Oh yeah, without even getting close to it, you're getting the aroma. I think that might be like the, I don't know if I would call it stone fruit without them calling it stone fruit. Is that what they call it? Stone fruit? Maybe they're just using that because it's stone corral. But yeah, sort of like a passion fruit, a guava, very tropical type fruit. Get a little malt in there too. Now I've, tried, I've had this before. I didn't really kind of analyze it. Whoops, as close as I am now. Ooh, it's a nice amber color. It's got a lot of head. That's what she said. But it's a nice amber color. Um, it, it has a lot of, they don't really note it in there, and I don't know if it's the malt or what it is, but there's a lot of, like, Belgian notes. If you guys drink a lot of Belgian beer, there's a certain characteristic that Belgian beer has, and I don't know how to classify it other than, like, it tastes like a Belgian. But let's go ahead and have a sip. Yeah, you get some of that bitter, like, IPA. And yes, it's a good blend. It's a very interesting beer, a lot of character. Um, there's a lot of depth to the flavor. It's not just hitting you all in the face with one particular thing and that's it. It finishes a little different. Yeah, I mean, Im immediately I get kind of that Belgian kind of like... I don't know how else to call it. But then it kind of finishes back, hits you with a little bit more like an IPA lager, more traditional style beer flavor. Comes back with a little bit of that Belgian leaves, kind of some high bitter, high bitter notes up there. I'm getting the malt. I'm getting. I guess uh, I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't call it resin, but maybe even that's kind of more like what it is. Oops, let me put it in here so you guys can see it. Anyway, and then uh, you get some a fairly strong alcohol flavor for six percent. You know, when you start hitting those 10, 11, 12% beers, there's a certain characteristic, like that fermented taste that you get from alcohol. But anyway, um, so back onto this bearing. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so it's a really, really kick A bearing in terms of spin time. But it's actually surprisingly smooth. So one of the things I actually really liked about the HC2, one of the reasons it was my favorite bearing, was that it had a lot of, like, play. Um, the tolerance wasn't super tight. So it actually, we're gonna um, we're gonna play around with the Voda here a little bit. We'll feature some Wusa, uh, mainly because the Voda I've been spinning a lot lately. Since I kind of haven't been doing reviews as much internet, you know that. Um, I haven't been kind of like rotating quite as much, and just the Voda is so good. I haven't. I actually came up here the other day to my little corner, and. Uh, Pulled out a bunch of spinners, went through, spun, 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 and I, you know, it's funny, even after spinning the Voda pretty much almost exclusively for, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks, that was the one I still wanted to spin. So, interesting for what it's worth. All right, so this is, a this is, I got, so when Hex sent me the little care package, he sent me two of these. So I've written it on the side with a Sharpie. I also have an arrow for which side the, the bearing spins longer. Um, fun note, so I don't forget, um, most of the time, and if you guys watch my great bearing review, review video, you'll realize that part of the problem is I wasn't getting consistent results with anything. Now some bearings, almost every bearing when I spin on a, pop, uh, a toothpick, chopstick, I almost said popsicle stick and I couldn't get it right. Um, when I spin it on a chopstick, one side spins longer and then you flip it over and it spins a little bit less. Um, with this one, there was definitely the same. One side was spinning about 10 seconds longer than the other side. However, when I put it in the Ohana and spun them, it got, um, the side that spun longer on the chopstick spun shorter, um, in spin time. So, um, I should say with this guy as well, while we're kind of watching it go here and we're nine minutes in, um, I, like I said, I, I got a couple, when I got it out of the box, I think I spun it and got close to 20 minutes. Um, then I cleaned it, uh, and that's when I got like 26, 27 minutes. 
since then I've cleaned it, cleaned them each one more time. And I got, um, I'm, I'm, again, I'm consistently kind of getting in the 21 to 24 minute range. So prior to doing this, I did give it one more clean. Um, the spin time on a, on a chopstick went from about 30 seconds up to about um, just shy of a minute. So I think I've got a good clean going in here, but I haven't done a spin time since I've had this clean. So, um, but anyway, so we've got the HC4 in here in the Voda. Voda's getting some nice patina, y'all, too. So you can see on the edge where my fingers really work it, where it's got kind of a nice polished look. And then you kind of get this muddy copper and then you kind of get these like rainbow colors. But, so I get a little bit of feedback with it. Not much, it's sort of like a wispy, brushy kind of feedback. Not quite a, what I would call a grassy, but uh, it's good. And the tolerance is pretty good. So like if we look here, Right? No little wiggly, no long spinny. I think Emerson was the first one to say. Oh, look at the patina on the side of the button too, y'all. It's nice. Um, yeah, so we get a nice little wiggle here, uh, but nothing too much. It doesn't feel loose. The thing with the other, the, the HC2, and if anybody's had an HC2 and an HC3, um, they'll know what I'm talking about, but an HC3 doesn't move that much, but it also feels like it's harder to move up and down. Um, like it's not quite as free falling, and this is doesn't quite feel super, super loose. Uh, but spins good. Um, doesn't actually feel like the fastest spinner. I think the looseness of the HC2 made it feel faster. Uh, but this is a fast bearing in terms of like, again, spin time. And it doesn't lose its momentum very easily. That's why obviously it gets such good spin time. Um, so it's got, it's nice. It's somewhere between um, an HC2 and an SBV2, which I think is a fair comparison, especially because two is my favorite number. And then two plus two is four. So we take an SBV2, an HC2, and then we get a... Um, you know, an HC4, so. Uh, but it's a really, really nice little bearing. If you like a little bit of feedback, but you like spin time, I think this is, even if you don't like spin time, it's still, again, like, you know, I've said before, even if you let it spin for two or three seconds, it doesn't lose its momentum, so it feels like it's not gonna stop, which is part of the thrill of a spinner. So, I don't know if I could say it's my new favorite in the sense of there'll be a certain place in my heart for the HC2 just because of all the character it has. Um, but I think this is, I know a lot of people didn't have that same sentiment. A lot of people thought that the HC2 just did feel a little too loose. So, um, but for me, it was a great, great bearing. Um, but these are still great bearings. And again, I think people are going to really, really like these. So I know Hex doing a little bit of a pre-order. He was kind of blown away by the times I was getting in there. So, um, also he sent me an HC2Z. So what it is, it's still a full shielded bearing, but if we look in there, see the white balls? Ooh, we really can see them. I don't think I've ever been able to show the ball color off on camera. And maybe it's just because the way the stainless steel reflects and then the, the zirconium hybrid ceramics, uh, or the silicone hybrid ceramics are um, black, so you can't really tell the difference. But So we got white balls and a full shield bearing. Now this one is a pretty interesting bearing as well. I think Hex said he likes this one the most, and I can see why. So this one on a pole, on a pull string, pull in here after a good clean. Um, got, and I do, maybe I should say this as well, I clean pretty much almost every bearing I get before I really start using it and testing it, because I don't know how much has gotten knocked around or dust in there and stuff like that in shipping. So that's not to say that you need to clean every bearing when you get it, uh, but for me especially, if I'm testing, I want to do that, and if you're into spin time and really into spin time, uh, then you're going to want to be able to clean your bearings anyway, so that shouldn't be a big deal. So don't expect to get one of these bearings and give it a pull on a, in an Ohana on your first attempt and get 27 minutes. In fact, I only got it that one time. I haven't been able to get back, but I've gotten in the neighborhood. So anyway, the HC2Z. Um, put this in the Ohana after a clean, gave it a pull. What do you think I got? 2119. So this is, I think, the longest zirconium bearing I've ever tried. Uh, most zirconium bearings don't seem to spin as long. They seem to be more about feedback. Uh, but this one was interesting. So um, tolerance-wise, um, the tolerance is still pretty good. It's a little looser than the HC4, um, but it doesn't feel super loose. Um, but what it does feel like is watery. Um, I don't know if that's going to be sort of like, oh, like Fabian when he calls it bearing grassy. Um, and I, it's it's weird to say because it doesn't feel like a lubed bearing. There is a little bit of feedback there, um, but it feels liquidy. It doesn't feel like, and not in a bad way, like a super 
solid bearing. It seems very fluid, like it kind of wants to move. Um, you know, and if you were to like move your hand through water really quickly, there'd be some resistance, there'd be some feedback. Like, I think we think of water as, if I'm trying to describe it as smooth or not, I think I would normally consider water smooth. Um, but there is a little bit of feedback there, but that's sort of like what it reminds me of. Um, but it does have tremendous spin time as well. So it's a, it's a nice one, I think, to add to the, to the repertoire. Um, and again, a little bit more feedback than this guy down there, so. So anyway, that's the, uh, the HC2Z, fun little bearing. Now he sent me two other bearings that were yo-yo bearings. I don't know if he has any plans on carrying them. Um, there's this little one here. I haven't really tested this one out that much, so we're not gonna talk about it, but it's got that concave side. But what I would do wanna talk about is the one in here in the bronze atrium. Now this is a really, really lovely bearing. I really like this one. I don't know what is involved, how expensive they are, what the deal is, if it's something Heck is really considering getting or if he can, um, but check that out. What? I have no idea what the materials are on this. And uh, oops, let's get this one. These are really a better tool. Um, I don't know what the material is of this, but it's definitely not like a spin time demon. Um, but look at that 15, almost 16 minutes. We're still spinning pretty good here, internet. Um, but yeah, it's got that concave side. Oh, it's like, a, I didn't even notice. So it's a half shield. So it's even like gold balls. It feels like it spins really fast. It doesn't um, in terms of spin time, um, but it does spin. Um, let's pop this in. So one thing I've noticed with this one is it's the tolerance is I actually, I'm not even going to try to put it in the Voda because I actually like it in this guy, um, but the tolerance is a little wide. Um, so it feels like it kind of almost wants to get stuck as did the other one. So I don't know if that's just a thing with yo-yo bearings in this concave, if there's a very slight width difference at the edge, but I find it's easier to put in here first and then to put in the spinner. Um, otherwise it kind of, it's, it kind of locks up the threads a little bit. So, um, but anyway, this has a really, really great profile. Um, so it feels fast again, even though it isn't, I think it just is, uh, the tolerance is a little loose. So it kind of really moves up and down and it might be kind of, it might be an acceleration type thing that might be good for yo-yos. Um, this really doesn't tell you much, but it feels pretty loose, but it's got a really, really nice feedback. So to come up with something I feel like would be fitting of heck. And I told him this, um, it's sort of as like a really shortly shaved scrotum, you know, you could probably say the same thing about your head, but since we're talking about balls, I felt that was more appropriate. But you know what I'm saying? Like if you shave your hair really short, but there's just a little bit there, that stubble, um, ball stubble. Um, but it has a really nice ring sound to it as well. Let me give it a good. Now, part of that is it being in a bronze spinner. But it really sings. The brass balls have golden pipes. So I really like this. So it's got a lot of excellent, excellent feedback. I real feel very strong, but subtle and even vibration. So it doesn't feel like it's not all ratchety, um, but it just feels nice. It lets you know that it's there and it makes a lot of noise. Also, let's look at the um, atrium. I haven't spun this for a little while. I was spinning this um, a little bit. I did carry it to work the other day. I've been leaving my Voda at work. So I had this in my pocket. It's sort of my daily carrying and spun it a little bit. So I've kind of worn the patina off a little bit. And I noticed this with my bronze cocoon as well, but like the patina almost like patinaed like zinc, like a zinc coating on metal, which I think is really red, right? So we're really starting to slow down <laughs> 18 minutes in. So really, really excellent bearing, really excellent spinner. I have been enjoying this a lot. I like the patina that's kind of developed in the ring, but yet it's kind of obviously where my fingers are jamming on it. It doesn't. 
Bronze Atrium. Um, Tom, and I should say, Tom's last name, Tom's just such a nice guy, I don't think he's ever corrected anybody that mispronounced his name wrong until someone actually asked him. His last name, I believe, is Lene. Um, it's L-A-N-E-T, but I believe it's um, either pronounced in a French way or of French origin, I'm not sure. Uh, but I believe it's Tom Lene. Tom, if you're watching, tell us how to pronounce your name properly if I'm getting it wrong. But uh, I believe it's Lene, not Lynette. Um, so, so yeah. So what I did want to say as well, I hadn't taken the time, and I don't know if Heck's still offering these or what the deal was. I was kind of in a weird spot when he sent me these, so I got to spin them a little. I didn't really give him the feedback he deserves. Um, but he sent me some shielded bearings. Um, Ten ball shielded um, stainless steel and hybrid ceramics. So I've got stainless steel ones, and I've got... A hybrid, hybrid one, and I've been spinning the hybrid one in here. Now they're shielded, so they're kind of a pain to clean. Um, and I've talked about this a little bit, but if you need to clean them, you have to, if you look around the outside, there's this little C ring holding it in, and you can see kind of the edge of the ring. You've got to take a pin and try not to stab yourself in the finger. And uh, you just kind of jam it in here on the edge, and you can eventually kind of like um, push it out. But the nice thing about it being shielded is you don't have to clean it a lot. Um, I don't know how these do for spin time because um, I haven't really, really tested them for spin time. I was actually jamming on it a lot. Um, but I think it's nice that you don't have to take it apart to, to clean it. I think the idea is like this is a real low maintenance one. Stuff's not really going to get in there very easily. And while the spin time didn't seem like tremendous and it wasn't super smooth. It wasn't like you expect for like a one drop or anything like that. These aren't super smooth. They kind of remind me of some of his um, hybrid ceramics in there. They have a little bit of feedback. Um, but they are good, um, good little bearings uh, if you're looking for something kind of low maintenance. So um, I actually have really been enjoying it. But I think what I'm going to do is this is the Voda. This is my daily driver. This is sort of what I have to deal with the internet. This is only one of two trays like that. But anyway... I think this really warrants a full ceramic in there. So let's pop these in while we wait for this to finish. I didn't, you know, I didn't think I should have known better. I was like, I'm probably gonna have to have some sort of disclaimer in this video like halfway through where I'm gonna be like, oh, you know, just skip to the, or we're just gonna, you know, speed ahead because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep talking. Because I didn't think I'd have 20 minutes worth of something to say. So I'm glad the spinner didn't make a liar out of me like on camera, because I certainly wasn't about to do like two or three takes. Um, and when you do a clean, anybody that's cleaned out a bearing will know, like sometimes you get a good, like especially like spin time group fam, you get a good spin. Um, other times you don't. Um, in terms of like you get a, good, get a good clean and get a good spin, so. But let's throw this in here. So this is the full silicone. Uh, so full, yeah, silicone nitride. I like the feedback, I like the kind of the rattle on that, but it's not going to be enough for, it's going to be too noisy at work because I do use this one all the time. So I do want something a little quieter that can be a little discreet. So if I go into a meeting or something, I don't have to worry about it, which I knew that was going to be louder anyway. That's why I started with that one because I knew I was going to be taking it out. So 2234, not too bad, not the longest that I've gotten, but again, I think a pretty respectable time. So even if it's not 27 minutes, um, this is still a spin time bearing and still outperforms the, any HC2 that I've tested. Um, now I didn't go through and retest all my HC2s and some definitely are better than others, but it was pretty consistent between these two. The two bearings that I got were giving me pretty consistent times. So in fact, one of them was, the first one was a 26 minute and then the other one I cleaned was the 27 minute, so. feels nice, but I think I know I'm going to want the other one, so I just wanted to feel it in there to say for sure. But there you have it, Internet. So he's doing a pre-order right now um, for the HC4s. I probably should have said this earlier in the video. Um, they are 20, uh, 15 bucks for um, five, so I think three bucks a bearing, um, which is a pretty good deal, especially for a bearing that's going to really be kicking A this good, so... Um, Definitely get in on the pre-order, but I would I would recommend, especially if you're someone like William, William Lee, the spin time, Godfather spin time. Yeah, that's where it's at. Um, I would definitely pick up some of the HC3s because he's gotten his best spin times, I should say, as well. We're out of the HC3. I never got that good at spin times out of them. They were decent, but nothing like that. So I'm going to play around with some HC3s a little bit um, and see if I can see how they really compare to this. 
Um, but that's the one that he's gotten, I think, over 30 minutes um, with an Ohana, uh, a copper Ohana. So, but um, yeah, definitely pick up, a, pick up a couple different ones and just order them all together. Save yourself a little bit of money on shipping. So, um, and take care of our, our man, Heck Ferula. He's like, yeah. So William's sort of like the godfather of spin times. Heck is definitely like the godfather of bearings. So, who make you a bearing, you can refuse. All right, internet. You didn't think I was going to let you out without a little... Covers, eh? Kisses.